Republicans. Let's make New Mexicans proud of what we do here every day. And with that, New Mexico lawmakers began the 2017 legislative session. The governor urged bipartisanship as lawmakers tackle the state's biggest issues like the budget, education, and crime. In her seventh state of the state address today, the governor says the state has avoided taking the easy way out when it comes to balancing the budget. But it didn't go far enough. News 13's Lizé Mitri has more from the governor and the Democratic response. Governor Susana Martinez started with the good news. New companies coming to New Mexico. Like SafeLight, Ketter, PCM, and yes, Facebook. But much of her state of the state address at the roundhouse today centered on the budget crisis. The state again facing a deficit even after a special session last year. Unfortunately, during that special session, we didn't go far enough. The governor says New Mexico needs to diversify its economy. We all know the cause of the crisis. We've been at the mercy of the federal government and an unpredictable oil and gas market. The governor says we're facing the steepest drop in oil and gas prices ever. Oil and gas revenues make up about a third of the state's budget. The state of our state is unacceptable. Democrats responded to the governor's plan for more cuts while she wants to avoid raising taxes, making cuts that would have state workers like teachers pay more into their retirement funds. Democrats say government workers shouldn't be singled out to carry the burden of the budget, hinting at a tax hike. Our goal this session will be to balance the budget by sharing the sacrifice to all New Mexicans and doing so without sacrificing the most essential services. Democrats control both chambers of the legislature this year, while the Republican governor ultimately has the power to veto. But both parties today touted the importance of putting party politics aside to make long-term changes. In Santa Fe, Lizé Mitri, KRQE News 13. The state is expecting a $69 million shortfall in the current fiscal year. Governor Martinez also called on lawmakers to keep working to improve education. She pointed out record high graduation rates last year, but says more needs to be done. She also encouraged lawmakers once again to end social promotion and hold third grade students back if they can't read. But in the Democrats' response, Senator Joseph Cervantes said they need to concentrate on encouraging good teachers to stay in the profession. Another problem facing the state, child abuse. The governor highlighted the deaths of Jaden Chavez Silver, Lily Garcia, Victoria Martins, and Ashlyn Mike. The governor is urging again a three strikes bill that would keep violent offenders locked up and increasing penalties for those who prey on children. If you intentionally abuse a child and that child dies, regardless of that child's age, you should never, ever get out of prison. The governor once again called to reinstate the death penalty for those that kill a child, law enforcement officer, or corrections officer. Jake and Dolly Salazar also joined the governor during her address today. They are the parents of 19-year-old Jacob, who was killed by a drunk driver a year ago. Governor Martinez touted the state's lowest DWI rates in decades, but vowed to keep fighting against DWI. She wants people to be punished if they allow convicted DWI offenders to drive their cars and tougher sentences for repeat offenders. While our Republican governor represents the executive branch, there's a shift of power this session for the Senate and the House. Representative Brian Egoff was elected as the new Speaker of the House. Democrats have a newly won 38 to 32 majority in the House. In the Senate, Senator Peter Wirth is the new Democratic floor leader. Democrats have a 26 to 16 advantage in the Senate.